The Lord be with you. And good morning, welcome to our online service here for, for February the 4th. We're in that pre-Lent time there with our Lord, uh, the old Latin names for those services. Today, sexagesima, and the word of the Lord for the second Sunday before Lent begins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended against all adversity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Sexagesima is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55. For as the sun, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapters 11 and 12. St. Paul writes, For you gladly bear with fools, being wise yourselves. For you bear it, if someone makes slaves of you, or devours you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or strikes you in the face, to my shame, I must say, we were weak. We were too weak for that. But whatever anyone else dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman. With far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes, less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure, and apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is made to fall? And I am not indignant. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, he who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. At Damascus, the governor under King Ariadus was guarding the city of Damascus in order to seize me, but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things. 
that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When a great crowd was gathering and people from town after town came to Jesus, he said in a parable, the sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell among the, along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away, because it had no moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let them hear. And when his disciples asked him what the parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not hear. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away their, the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of testing, fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from his Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Fellow baptized saints, it turns out God is a farmer. Who saw that coming? That all he's doing with this dying creation is harvesting his own word. The sower went out to sow. The seed 
is the word of God. He left his home in heaven above, put on his straw hat, closed the door behind him, picked up his seed, and came into the world to get to work. He's looking for one thing, faith in the word. This morning, Jesus tells us that all God is doing in this world is looking to harvest his word in you, looking to create and grow faith and its fruit. Everything else is just waste, chaff, farming debris. He wants faith. So as our Lord holds out such a simple yet important goal in this parable this morning, we're going to ask him three questions. What is the word? How is it received? And what fruit does it grow? Question number one. You want faith in your word, Lord. But what is the word? Yes. We're starting with the right question. The Lord has a very specific word in mind when he teaches this parable, a very specific seed. He isn't speaking about his word of law, as though a bunch of rules could make faith grow. It isn't God's demands that make us trust him and bear fruit with patience, no. The commandments show our sin. They reveal our guilt. They break the hard, packed ground of our hearts to make room for the seed and expose our need. Because the seed that Jesus has in mind is the word of the gospel, the good news of faith, by which he calls us to trust that by grace, on account of his obedient life and his innocent suffering and death, the law is fulfilled for us and we are forgiven of all our sins. That word makes faith. That word alone frees us to trust him, to want him, to wait for him. What word is Jesus spreading? What seed is he planting in the world? The word of grace. His word of full, free mercy. Well, he's answered our first question. What is the word? His promise of grace and mercy. But what about our second question? How is that message received? What are the different ways that people hear and receive the gospel? Well, he tells us there are four of them. Four different ways that people receive the gospel. Now, <laughs> I want to be clear that each of us has received his word of grace in more than one of these ways. It's not that people are immediately stuck in one of these four ways, though certainly on the last day, one description will prevail. The word is living and active. He's working on us all the time, teaching us what to avoid and what to hold dear. And we all know this from our own struggles with our old Adam, how faith isn't always the first thing in which we respond in life, even if we want it to be. Let the Lord teach you about your heart when it comes to his word. There are four ways people receive the gospel. The first way Jesus tells us about is when someone hears the gospel but doesn't understand it or see its true value. These are not those who persecute the word or don't want to hear it, but those who hear it and are students of it who also want to be called Christians but have a worldly heart and will not let the word take root in them. Jesus says his seed falls on the path, that hard, dense heart that has been trampled down underfoot, and there's no room for the word in there. The heart is not open enough for the seed to get in, but just lays on top until the birds of the air come and take it away. Or as we say, <laughs> the word goes in one ear and out the other. How does this happen? Well, Jesus describes two troubles. First, he says these hearts have been trampled underfoot. 
talking about the teachings of men that rule in our hearts, you know, our own ideas about how God should do things. You see, when we insist that God should be a certain way or work a certain way and do not let his word rule, our hearts are closed off like the soil of a path. Our worldly, low ideas have closed off our hearts to his word of grace that comes from above, way above. I mean, the very best example of this is our insistence on fairness. The old Adam has this idea that things should be fair because he is blind to his own sin and the punishment that in fairness he deserves for it. This is the word of the law not the word of grace. Yet how easy is it for us to measure everything by it, to raise it up so high in our hearts that we demand God also must measure everything by it. This is exactly what Jesus is saying. The things must be fair. There is no room for grace. If a heart insists on the way of the law, there is no room for mercy and the way of the gospel. Well, then the second trouble comes. The devil, Jesus says, and takes away the word of grace from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. The enemy doesn't want that word of grace sitting there on top of the heart. What if something loosens the soil? What if it gets in? So he takes it away. That's the first way that people may hear the gospel without understanding. Now the second way people may hear the gospel, Jesus says, is to receive it with joy at first, but then fall away under persecution. This means that they understand God's grace correctly. They really get it, marvel at it, receive joy from it. They know the truth, that they are saved without works, through faith in Christ alone. They know they are free from the slavery of the law. But when it comes to the test, that they must suffer harm, disgrace, and loss of life or property, then they fall away and deny the word of grace. They aren't planted deep enough in the soil and don't have enough root. These are the seeds planted on the rock when the cross comes, dear ones, let God strengthen your faith. Don't give up. Never give up. But burrow deeper into him. This is the only way. Now the third way that people may hear the gospel, Jesus says, is to hear and understand it. But it falls among the pleasures and cares of this life. This third way isn't disrupted by false teaching or persecution. No, these things are too, no, the things are too easy. For here they enjoy peace and good days and do not give themselves to the word. They pursue a life of comfort, not a life of repentance. They know their duty, but fail to do it. They teach, but do not practice. And they are this year as they were last. If anything might describe our generation as a whole, you know, living here in cushy Canada, this seed falling among thorns is it. Today, many look for church to entertain them and inspire them rather than expose their sin and forgive them. They look for a God that suits their pleasures rather than a God calling them to repentance. But these thorns of feeling and pleasure do not let the word of grace spring up they choke it and their fruit does not mature take notice of this tendency in yourselves dear ones and prune it out immediately now the fourth way that people may hear the word of grace jesus says is to lay hold of and keep the word in a good and honest heart and bring forth fruit with patience. 
Those who hear the word and steadfastly retain it, meditate upon it, and act in harmony with it in a life of repentance. The devil can't snatch it away. They are not led astray. No, they receive the cross and persecution when it comes, never letting it rob them of the grace. The thorns of pleasure and worldliness does not hinder the growth of the word in them, but they bear fruit. They suffer much on account of the word. Shame and disgrace from those in the world that don't understand them. They know this word of grace is the word of the cross, that whoever would keep it must bear the cross as Paul just described, both the misfortune and the triumph. And for that triumph, they wait. Jesus says they have good and honest hearts. <laughs> Not meaning that they haven't sinned or don't sin. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No. These good and honest hearts tell the truth. They are good and honest because they look for and acknowledge their sin before God, and they turn to him alone for forgiveness and mercy, letting him prune their faith that his faith may and fruit may grow. Yes, good and honest hearts are those worked by regular confession and forgiveness. Those that let God's word rule them, whether law or gospel, trusting always that his grace prevails and grace is his purpose. Good and honest hearts make themselves vulnerable before him. They tell the truth to him and don't try to hide. They believe he comes forgiving and wants to restore us to himself, no matter what. These are good and honest hearts that live by faith. These hearts patiently bear fruit. He's answered our second question. What are the different ways that people hear and receive the word, that you and I hear and receive the word? Well, now on to our third and final question this morning. What does this seed do? <laughs> Jesus teaches us that his good news bears fruit with patience. But what does this mean? Well, first of all, it means salvation, faith. God's word of grace first creates and sustains saving faith. And then, since God word, God's word accomplishes all good, the fruits of faith are sure to follow. It makes us wise, sensible, prudent, cautious, pious, kind, patient, Faithful, discreet, chaste, and things like these. When Jesus says, with patience, he means it takes time. One notices God's grace producing these fruits in hindsight, after years of letting him rule by forgiveness. And it may not be the believer noticing these fruits. Our hope is not that we would see them for ourselves, but that others would see them and over time be drawn to the word of grace that produced them. May the Lord use whatever fruit he produces in us by his grace, be a benefit to our neighbors, not to us. May he make it lead to more faith for him to harvest and more glory to his name. God is a farmer. He's harvesting faith from this dying world. It grows by his word of grace that he has spoken directly to you. Receive it, suffer for it. Repent and believe with all your heart and enjoy the promise as it grows and takes you all the way to eternal salvation. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.
Redeemer, you have a, a very important faith harvest that the Lord is working to gather. And we're going to ask him to send laborers to really bring uh, that preaching effort, that word, more and more uh, to you. So include that now in your prayers as we bow our heads. Lord of the harvest, you send your word down on earth to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. You are living and active among us, calling to repentance and raising to new life. Lead us not into temptation and protect us from the crafts and assaults of the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh, which do not want us to hallow your name or let your kingdom come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send forth laborers into your harvest, that we may be preserved in the pure teaching of your saving word, whereby faith toward you is strengthened, charity increased in us toward all, and your kingdom extended in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring Father, visit the homes of your people, keep them from all harm and danger, and grant that we would dwell together in peace under the protection of your holy angels. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, look favorably on the nations of the world and their leaders, that all who receive the sword as your servants would bear it according to your command. We pray that war, hate, and bloodshed would be overcome by peace, justice, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, have compassion on the sick and suffering. Make them to know your peace, which the world cannot give, and bring them out of all their troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the faithful departed. Cultivate the seed of your word in our hearts until you bring us to share with them in the joys of your unending feast. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son has promised to be with us always until the end of the age. Strengthen and preserve us today as he comes to us in his holy supper. Grant that we would faithfully receive his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins, and so obtain everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, you planted your word in the hearts of your children. Grant that we would rejoice to receive this gift and use it to bear abundant fruit in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have sown your holy word among us. Prepare our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that we may diligently and reverently hear your word, keep it in good hearts, and bring forth fruit with patience, and that we may not incline to sin, but subdue it by your power, and in all persecutions comfort ourselves with your grace and continual help. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.